Hi, everyone. It's great to see everyone, though. Those are in robes. I'm so excited that you had robes. Hi, I can see you. They're smiling back. Um, usually I would be in regalia, uh, but I don't own my own. Um, I usually borrow it from the provost's office. So. Wore some Stony Brook red for the Sea Wolves, um, and uh, you'll note that the faculty have tried to put uh, the Zucare background behind us so that you can sort of quickly see us um, on the screen. Those of you who are the family and friends, that helps you know who your um, friends and family have been studying with. So welcome, everyone. Um, we have um, three talks. Um, and I've been doing it. Sadly, um, we, you can't unmute yourself anymore um, because of the problem with the Zoom bomber. But um, when we call your name, Laura will be able to spotlight your video, which means that everyone who is on the call will see your video at that point. Um, I felt like that was a really important thing, and that's why we didn't do it webinar style, even though Karen <laughs> told me that we should because of Zoom bombers, and now I wish I'd listened to her. Uh, but. We're gonna persevere um, because it doesn't seem like any Zoom bombers are here. Um, so I'm super excited about this. Um, our first speaker is uh, Phil Palmetto and he was here earlier. I don't know if he came back in, but it is my pleasure to introduce Philip Palmetto. He's giving our opening remarks and I served on the art sport of the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics with him. And I was always really impressed by his nuanced understanding of the relationship between art and science. He's also a great supporter of the arts at Stony Brook and has just finished a new book on math and sculpture. So he um, is on the Zoom call, but he felt much more comfortable pre-recording his remarks. So I'm now going to share my screen and play the video that he has created for our graduate. I'm delighted to be able to participate in such a positive occasion in these trying days and to congratulate every one of you on your accomplishments in these important fields. I emphasize the word important because the gist of my brief comments today is to say that art matters. That's today's motto. I mean important in two ways. I'm sure many of you and many others over the past few months have taken consolation in being able to enter the world of art. That's the personal sense of the importance of art. After all, what would the world be like without art, a terrible thought. But some of you may have felt a bit guilty in taking what may have seemed like an escape. But there's another meaning of the importance of art, the fact that it is an essential part of what makes it human. I've explored this notion over the past three years by thinking through the relationship between art and science. Science, something respected by, well, almost everyone. And I have found amazingly deep affinities between art and science. The earliest art is supposed to be the cave paintings now found around the world. But clearly, by the time some 30,000 years ago, when the cave of Chauvet, France was painted, humans had a sophisticated aesthetic sense. So when and how did art arise? Early humans were faced with a baffling chaotic natural world. Their survival depended on figuring out nature. Seeking patterns and order in nature was at the origins of both science and art. Those who were sensitive to kinds of order had better chances of survival. And thus, those instincts became embedded in our genes. A fundamental kind of order was symmetry. Humans are bilaterally symmetric, and symmetry was a sign of healthy life in the natural world. Some 600,000 years ago, humans created hand axes that were far finer and more symmetric than required for any practical purpose. Those were the first art objects. And symmetry 
became fundamental to both art and science. The most symmetrical shapes are the circle and the sphere, and they are the most prevalent shapes in both science and art, including when art communicates science, as in the 16th century image of the Ptolemaic universe. Science still sees the universe and the basic unit of elementary matter as spherical. The stained glass window at Notre Dame in Paris shares the shape of the detector at the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. The circle is universal in two important senses. In a Shiva, a circle becomes a cycle, the cycle of life. Leonardo united science and art. His drawings often started as sketches for paintings, but evolved into scientific explorations. In the field of brain imaging, the team of Greg Dunn and Brian Edwards acted as scientists, but their renderings of the function of the human brain could very well have been produced for purely aesthetic reasons. These days, mathematicians and physicists are more apt to use the word beauty than artists, particularly when formulating new theories. In 1957, Richard Feynman and Murray Gell-Mann developed a theory of the interactions between fundamental particles. The theory did not agree with some recent experiments that had aesthetic qualities that convinced its authors. Feynman described the moment of discovery, quote, there was a moment when I knew how nature worked. It had elegance and beauty. The goddamn thing was gleaming. The connection between art and science resides in that mysterious word, beauty. Trite as they are, Keats's words ring true. Beauty is truth, truth beauty. The art instinct resides deeply within us and is deeply important. That escape that you may have experienced was an escape to a deeper reality. So no matter what you become, a professional artist, a teacher, a biochemist, a Supreme Court justice, I hope you continue to enjoy art as an important part of your life. Thank you again and the very, very best of luck to you all. And never forget, art matters. That was from Phil. And those of you who are able to unmute yourself, unmute and applaud. And sentiment. So um, now, um, Isak is going to introduce himself and announce the first awards. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Am I present in the virtual room? Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, I sort of just want to follow up and uh, say what an amazing and thoughtful and philosophical talk that was from uh, Mr. Palmetto. And um, we're also grateful. Um, and as I sort of mentioned that, it is my honor to be the presenter of the awards. And I'm going to be starting, as I speak about the impact of the Palmetto family, I'm going to be starting with the Elizabeth and Philip Palmetto Scholarship in Studio Art, which goes to Kiana Lom. And the Elizabeth and Philip Palmetto Scholarship in Art History and Criticism goes to Siana Jackson. Yay! 
Well, um, I usually have a keyboard uh, with uh, loud applause for my student critiques. I, I should have prepared uh, my folly sound. Um, what did the balloon say? <laughs> Um, I'm going to continue. Um, the A at AHLSS 2020 Summer Research Fellows Award Courtney Memorial Award goes to Joey Ventura. Yay! Congratulations. Yay. All right, there's no spotlight. So I'm going to continue. The Leon Bolitan Scholarship in Studio Art goes to Brian Ortman. I really. We need more applause. I need my son to come here and applaud with me because we're getting, we're, we're, we need a super kind of. Bombing. Just came, just came back in. We had a delay, you know, to be to be fair. Um, finally, it is my honor to announce the Maurice M. Goldberger and Miriam H. Goldberger Fine Arts Scholarship in Art History and Criticism, which goes to Amy Kang and Daniel Menzo. Very dynamic to move the clapping from one side of the screen to the other. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations. While the Goldberger Scholarship in Studio Art goes to Marta Baumiller and Heather Weston. Um, in our department, uh, the Piper Award was already announced earlier, uh, and it went to Daniel Donato. Uh, it was a purchase award for one of his portraits, uh, in, portraits in a car cardinal gown. So congratulations to all of the, uh, recipients. Congratulations. I just received, uh, your medal. Um, I, you received now, my it is my honor to introduce to you Karen Levitov, the director of the Paul Zucker Gallery Let me just at the her. Stoller Center for the Arts. Besides curating and organizing very impressive contemporary art exhibitions at Zucker, uh, Karen also organizes the annual senior show and coordinates the awards given by the president, dean of students, dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and the Stoller Center for the Arts. And now, Karen to announce the 2020 Senior Show Awards. Thank you, Isaac, and congratulations to all of the award recipients. I'm very proud that we are able to present this year's Senior Show and Eureka exhibitions as online exhibitions. And um, if you'd like to look at all the works in the Senior Show and Eureka exhibitions, um, they can be found on the Zucare Gallery's website. And now it is with great pleasure that I announce the award winners of this year's Senior Show. For the President's Purchase Award goes to Catherine Meyer for 2020 1A Woven Pathways, Acrylic on Canvas. For the Dean of Students Purchase Awards, 
They, uh, there are two of them and we'll do applause at the end of all of the Senior Show Awards. Uh, I'd like to present the Dean of Students Purchase Award to Yi Seung Margaret Jong for Untitled Number One, Oil on Canvas. And the second Dean of Students Purchase Award goes to Yuk Cheng Chang for Comfort Crowd, Oil on Canvas. And now the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences Purchase Awards. The, uh, there are two of these awards and they go to Trey Shizimu for Natural Disaster Ceramic. And, and the second of the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences Purchase Award goes to Asi Zit for Best Friend Digital Photograph. So those awards that I just announced will become part of the university's permanent collection. So congratulations to those students who won Senior Show Purchase Awards. And now I'm going to announce the Stoller Center Awards for Excellence. These awards go to Yi Chen for Queensboro Plaza Station, Oil on Canvas. and to Alexa Jade Frankelis for a visit from the 19th century palladium print. Yulong Hu for nightmare video. Sierra Miles Lampa for 15th Avenue acrylic on panel. and uh, Sophia Manor for Youth Digital Media. Catherine Meyer for 2019 10S Hatching Hydra Steel and Wall Wood. Isabel Simon Blue Lithograph. And the last one goes to Jessica Vilas Boas for menstruation, digital photograph. Congratulations to all of the Senior Show Award winners and all of the Senior Show artists. And now I'd like to introduce Jason Parody, who will be giving the Eureka Awards. Jason Parody is a lecturer in studio art, teaching painting, drawing, and media. And this is his first year organizing the Eureka Art Exhibition with awards from the Dean of Students and selections of the Virginia Fuller Award for Emerging Artists. Jason. Thank you, Karen. Um, the Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities Eureka Art Exhibition celebrates outstanding artwork created by students working in the studios of the art department uh, this academic year. Over 40 students were nominated by their instructors to display their work in this year's uh, exhibition. Um, this year we had to move online, which was uh, something we felt really important to do to kind of keep moving forward and to celebrate all the great work that is being done in the art department. Um, to see the, the full exhibition online, go to the Zucare Gallery's webpage and you can kind of click on that, you can click on that link and uh, see all of the work submitted. Um, from submissions, two sets of awards uh, were selected for prizes. Um, so the following are the awards for the Dean of Students Art Competition. First place goes to Steffi Jeswin for Listen, a digital photograph. Second place goes to Marlena Urban for Snow Moon, Oil on Canvas. Third place goes to Brian Ortman for Keel Build Toucan, an acrylic on canvas. Honorable mentions are as follows. We have Taylor Zoro for Flores, Intaglio Print with Watercolor. Alice Luo, Fading Cultural Connections, a lithograph. Oh, sorry, Taylor. <laughs> uh, 
ivory shoe for ivory self uh, portrait when oil on canvas. Molly Mai for Orinendo, a ceramic. Melissa Maza, see and grow, dry point print. Brittany Becker, colorful arra arrangement in light, oil on canvas. Agnieszka Garish, for still life of a table, glass, and basket, oil on canvas. And our video prize winners are Daniel Pritchard, Cynthia Buena Yuto, Eileen Chung, and Timur Tamango, for Strangletti, a video. Let's give the uh, Dean of Students Awards a round of applause. <laughs> All right, the following are the nominations for the Virginia Fuller Award for Emerging Artists on behalf of Gallery North and sponsored by Sharon Cowles. First place goes to Isabel Grace Simon for Blue 2, 2019 uh, lithograph on UNRU. Second place goes to Brian Ortman for Solitude in Acrylic on Canvas. Third place goes to Drew Ma for During Quarantine in Oil on Canvas. And the honorable mention for this award is Amy Ding for Food for Thought, to, uh, Ceramic from 2019. Let's give all the winners a congratulatory round of applause. Bravo. All right, thank you. Um, at this point, I'd like to introduce our alum speaker, Rebecca Uliats, MFA graduate class of 2017 and current PhD uh, candidate at Duke University in the Department of Com Computational Media, Arts and Cultures. She is working on a dis dissertation project that leverages a critique of emerging computer vision technologies and the operations of the computational image. Rebecca. Hi, can everyone hear me? Hi, um, congratulations to all the award winners. I'm really happy to see all of you, those that I know and congrats to all of you that I don't. Um, it feels really disingenuous for me to not begin by acknowledging the heaviness of the current moment and the uncertainty around the shape our lives will take over the coming months. The format of this graduation, one that would have seemed absurd to speculate on even a few months ago, has become one that for many of us has subsumed all of our social interactions spanning from school to work to staying in touch with loved ones. I'd like not to harp on the obvious, but rather want to consider momentarily the possibility that forms of digital being together, even ones born of crisis, might build to something meaningful, even surprisingly transformative where we might least expect it. As I attempted to think of what to say to you today in this brief window of time, I remembered an unexpected type of being together that Stony Brook gave me, one that would have ripple effects in the direction that my life would take over the coming years. I recalled video jockeying for the first time ever at the Velvet Lounge, the bar venue attached to the Curry Club next door to campus, a place one might go to run into a familiar face or happen upon a local acoustic musician over Sunday free curry. I took the gig on a whim, partially because a friend asked me to fill in and partially because I had a keen sense of being drawn to the idea of performing with images a vision of myself on my screen, but live, sharing a real-time acoustic and optic field with other artists. The event happened better than any of us had anticipated, 
and spun into a series, a regularly occurring Wednesday night improv. The manager installed a projector on a ceiling mount and hundreds of folks would show up just to catch up and be together in the space we were giving shape to through our non-conventional three-hour vibes. I realized in hindsight the role this played in my performance practice, which has taken me in institutional and DIY spaces that have been deeply formative of many of my closest professional and personal relationships. Now working towards my PhD in computational media arts and cultures at Duke University, I seek out spaces that give me what the Velvet Lounge did, that is, a shared network of values, a non-conventional grouping of makers and thinkers willing to suspend judgment and act on an absurd desire or half-formed idea that births the space for something else to unfold. I am reminded of philosopher Gilbert C. Mundon's notion of individuation, the idea that an entity being or concept is formed from the tiniest germ around which a crystal lattice coheres. The crystal might extend in unexpected directions or dissolve back into vibrant matter to be activated in new ways. Lately, I've been in touch with artists, friends, and communities around the world with more frequency. I've seen people make work in virtual worlds and build new platforms for being together in real time. I've seen digital exhibitions like the Wrong Biennale curate special showings to keep an energy alive. I've seen people like Paul Stilellis at Queer Archive in Providence create special risograph compilations of work sourced from writers and makers producing work from quarantine. These efforts don't claim to fill in a void, but rather to offer up space for conversations to be held in spite of ongoing anxiety and confusion, an antidote to overwhelming isolation. I've seen people create not to incentivize themselves, but rather as an act of care for each other and for their creative communities. This is the type of being together that being a maker makes possible. As artists and humanitarians, we are poised for creative thought and have unconventional abilities to suspend the practical in favor of pursuing the utopian. So today, I want to offer you all a sincere congratulations and heartfelt gratitude for the work that you've done and will no doubt continue to do in the spirit of making these types of spaces exist. Thank you, and congrats to all of you. All right, we're going to move on now with the presentation of the degrees. And I would like to introduce our graduate director and senior lecturer in art history, Shoki Gudarzi. She has been with Stony Brook since 2001 and has been teaching ancient and contemporary art of the Middle East along with Greek, Roman and Egyptian art. Shoki. Thank you, Meg, and thank you, Rebecca. Very touching. Um, speech you gave. Um, this is certainly a very odd uh, way to carry on with the graduation, but I am thrilled to be here for the number of students who are graduating this year, especially um, many of whom I've known for a number of years. Um, so I'm not going to take too much time. I know everyone is probably running short. We are going to start um, first. Um, Sorry, uh, Zoom is giving me all sorts of messages on my screen. We're going to start with our doctorate students, um, and I'm not sure uh, how many are here um, on our virtual room, but I'll start uh, alphabetically. Um, Sandrine Kanak, um, who um, received her um, doctorate just um, last uh, fall um, in art history. Um, her title, the title to her dissertation was Measured Volume to Indefinite Expansion, she wrote uh, of uh, Robert Barry and the long 1960s. Her advisor, um, Andrew Yurosky. Um, is Sandrine here? I'm assuming silence or no spotlighting means that she must not be with us. Congratulations nonetheless, and also to her um, committee. 
Um, my next um, doctorate this semester is um, a student that I met long ago when she first started, uh, Nikki Georgopoulos, Jor Jor um, and Nikki, um, you're very dear to me. I'm so proud of you for everything you've accomplished before I start crying. Everyone knows I'm a bit too emotional. Um, her dissertation under um, uh, James Rubin um, was just uh, finished, was it February? maybe right before the pandemic <laughs> um, and she wrote her dissertation on reflecting the real the mirror in 19th century french art my heartfelt congratulations to you my dear and uh, our next um, guest uh, uh, as well as a doctorate um, is Yvonne Olivas another student who's whom I've been with for many years um, and uh, I am so proud of you as well for having finished uh, this massive work and I really want to stress that to everyone to finish a dissertation is a huge task to finish it under uh, the pandemic, it's beyond um, immeasurable. So all of them take an extra, extra clap of hands from my perspective. Yvonne um, wrote her dissertation on Lee Lozano, general strike peace and the praxis of total revolution under the advisement of Zabit Patterson. Um, congratulations, my dear. And um, our last doctorate, um, uh, was uh, um, given to Erin Stout, and I'm not sure if Erin is with us. Erin, okay, is she? I heard the little dings. I was hopeful that she may be here. Um, Erin um, finished her dissertation. She was one of our first, actually, last fall. Um, and under the direction of Zabit Patterson, um, she wrote her dissertation on you, me, we, the techno-social work of Tony Martin and the audiovisual avant-garde of 1960s. Congratulations, Erin. If you're hearing us somewhere, I wish you the best. But we are also um, blessed this year with a number of master students um, who also finished. And as part of uh, the completion of that program, um, you must write a master's thesis. Um, and this year we have um, five students, um, two of whom um, uh, are uh, uh, first the round of BA MA students. This means um, a master's that um, is by invitation and one that we ask uh, students in their junior year as an undergrad to join us. Um, and upon admission, um, they continue uh, their undergraduate plus one more year, the fifth year where they receive a master's. And I'm very pleased that this year our two first uh, uh, inductees into this BAMA, Jade Blanco, is um, wrote her uh, master's thesis on um, the slave market, um, Jerome and the presentation of reality. Um, with uh, me as her advisor. Congratulations, Jade. I hope she's here. I guess she's not. Um, next uh, in alphabetical order is Emily Finnan. Um, and Emily um, deserves a, a, another whole round of uh, uh, applause. Emily finished her master's with a full uh, 4.0 grade point average. Um, and her thesis was under the guidance of KV Siegel. Um, and the title of her thesis, Accessibility of Democracy, the Politics of Christo and Jean-Claude's Architectural Installations. Congratulations, Emily. Next in line, um, we have Caitlin. Caitlin Halloran. Oh, yes, and she's here. I'm so pleased. Um, and Caitlin also wrote her uh, master's thesis under um, Katie Siegel. And the title of her master's is Not Just uh, a Mrs., How Helen Frankenthaler, Lee Krasner, and Elaine de Kooning Worked Against Female Stereotypes um, in the Age of Abstract Expressionism. Congratulations, my dear. Uh oh <laughs> all right i get worried now every time we hear a loud <laughs> noise in the background 
Um, and uh, uh, the, first, see, uh, the first of our BAMA was Jade Blanco, and the second of our masters um, and a recipient of one more award um, is Sienna Jackson. Um, and Sienna, you know how I feel about you from the day that you walked into my class four years ago. I'm so proud of what you've accomplished. Um, she wrote her master's thesis really on her own with very little input on from uh, her advisor, which happens to be myself. And Sienna's thesis was on ritual irony and the maiden, the marriage sacrifice metaphor in classical Greek vase painting. Um, Sienna, we wish you the best of luck at UPenn. She's about to start her doctorate there. We will miss you and we hope that you all will always come back to us. Congratulations. And last but not least, um, we have uh, Tom Rutkowski, who also finished his master's um, uh, with the guidance of David Mather. Um, Tom wrote his uh, master's thesis on metaphysical documents, the late photograph photography of Stanislaw um, Wikovic. I hope that I'm pronouncing his, la his last name properly. Um, and congratulations. Um, wonderful achievement to all of you. Every single one of you deserve a huge balloon. And I wish I was in the room with you to meet your family and to um, congratulate them along with you. I wish you all the best. Yay. Isaac, what are you doing? Um, and now I'm going to pass the baton of the, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the speaker to Isaac, um, who is once again, I guess, with a plant in the background, um, is going to um, introduce uh, the graduates in the studio division of our department. Hello. You have to not me. Hi everyone. I have uh, flowers, but the interaction of the exhibition at Zucker and my celebratory flowers for uh, my graduate are doing an interesting back and forth. Um, it is uh, now my real honor, my real real, my virtual real honor to present the Masters of Fine Arts degrees in studio art and to publicly announce the graduation of Julia Miller. <laughs> Julia Miller, these flowers are for you. Let's see, sort of pass them through the screen somehow. These flowers are not for you. <laughs> they're for, they're for uh, you, to, to, they were for me, Julia, but you know, that mean that is uh, uh, the same thing. Congratulations. Uh, Julia's thesis project, uh, The World Through My Glasses, Personal Meets Public, advised by Maya Schindler, Lorena Saceda Watson, and Ian Allen Paul. Um, congratulations, Julia, for your incredible work and commitment during this precarious time. We are also very proud of you and the achievements of all of our graduate students. Um, thank you and congratulations. Wait. Okay. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Lorena Salcedo Watson, lecturer in studio art and our undergraduate program director. She has been on faculty since 2008. She teaches drawing, lithography, as well as beginning advanced and experimental printmaking. Lorena will be announcing the bachelor degrees in studio art and art history. Welcome. 
<laughs> Hi, uh, welcome friends and family. Um, congratulations to everybody on this day of celebration, however quirky it has been so far. I hope it's wonderful and celebrate it well. Um, as undergrad director, I have had the pleasure to work with many of your students as they develop their program of study here at Stony Brook. Um, it is an emotional yet exciting time as they go off and continue on to new opportunities and challenges. Ugh, I didn't mean to start. <laughs> um, they have obtained skills and confidence while enjoying colleagues and mentors to work with and to guide them uh, to identify their unique potential. With you, we are all very proud of their many accomplishments. Um, and I would love, I'm honored to read our list of art history and criticism and studio art, uh, the graduating class of 2020. And the following students uh, will be receiving their Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art. Um, congratulations to Caroline Amund. She is a studio art major. Congratulations, Caroline. Mohammed Assem. Mohammed is a studio art major and he also completed a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Mohammed. Okay. Gary Beauvoir. Gary has received his Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art. Congratulations, Gary. Uh, Christian Buckheit. Christian received his uh, bachelor's in studio art, received a digital art minor, and he graduates magna cum laude. Congratulations, Christian. Yuk Cheng Chang. Yuk Cheng is receiving her studio art major and digital art minor. Congratulations, Yuk Cheng. Ye Chen. Ye is receiving his bachelor's in studio art with a digital arts minor. Ye Chen. Congratulations. Yun Tung Chen. Yun Tung Chen is receiving her bachelor's degree in studio art. Congratulations, Yun Tung. Elizabeth Adele Dow. Elizabeth is a multidisciplinary studio st studies major. She has an art history concentration and a studio art minor. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Rose Goldberg. Rose has completed her bachelor's in studio art. She has an art history minor, and she also completed an honors project last year. Congratulations, Rose. Sabrina Huancayo. <laughs> Sabrina has received her studio art uh, bachelor's degree, and she also has a second major in art history. Congratulations, Sabrina. <laughs> Boris Kishinevsky. Boris is receiving a bachelor's in studio art and he also completed a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Boris. Ciara Miles Lampa. Congratulations, Ciara. Ciara receives her bachelor's in studio art and she completed an art history minor. 
Congratulations. Nahi Lee. Nahi has completed a bachelor's in studio art, and she also completed a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Nahi. Yihan Li. Yihan completed a bachelor's in studio art. Congratulations. <laughs> Jacob Lopez. Jacob has completed his bachelor's in studio art and also a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Jacob. Gregory Lucci. Yay. <laughs> Gregory is completing a studio art bachelor's and he also received a digital arts minor and he graduates cum laude. Congratulations, Gregory. Catherine Meyer. Catherine is graduating with her bachelor's in studio art and she graduates summa cum laude. Congratulations. Daniel Maniachi. Daniel graduates with his studio art major and his digital arts minor. Congratulations. Samantha Montes. Samantha is a multidisciplinary studies major and she has an art history concentration. Congratulations, Samantha. Young Young No. Young Young has completed a bachelor's in studio art as well as a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Young Young. Alexandra Oliver. Alexandra has completed her bachelor's in studio art. Congratulations. Stephen Pritchard. Stephen Pritchard has completed his bachelor's in studio art as well as a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Stephen. Zheng Shen. Zheng has completed a studio arts major as well as a digital arts minor. Congratulations, Zeng. Na Si Sit. A Si Sit has completed a studio art major and a digital art minor, and she graduates cum laude. Congratulations. Isabel Grace Simon. Isabel is a multidisciplinary studies major with a studio art concentration. Congratulations. Timra Tomengo. Timra graduates with her bachelor's in studio art and a digital art minor, and she graduates magna cum laude. Congratulations. Lauren Umstetter. Lauren graduates with her bachelor's in studio art. Congratulations, Lauren. Joey Ventura. Joey graduates with a bachelor's in studio art and a, an art history is a second bachelor's. And Joey graduates summa cum laude. Congratulations, Joey. Jordan VR. Jordan graduates with her bachelor's in studio art. Matthew Joseph Walsh. 
Matthew graduates with his studio art major, an art history minor, a digital arts minor, and he graduates cum laude. Congratulations, Matthew. Samantha Westman. Samantha graduates with her studio art bachelor's degree, an art history minor, and she graduates cum laude. Cheers. Congratulations, Sam. Sijia Xie. Sijia graduates with her studio arts major and a digital art minor. Congratulations, Sijia. Taylor Zero graduates with a bachelor's in studio art. Congratulations, Taylor. Okay, now I'm moving on to our Bachelor of Arts in Art History and Criticism. Rick Jarrell Aguilar, he graduates with his art history major. Congratulations, Rick. Victoria Bonagura, BA in Art History. Victoria? Oh, no, she, was in the, she was just in the waiting room. I let her in. Okay. Okay, I would like to announce Victoria Bonagura. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations on your art history bachelors. Cheers. Hai Chen graduates with her bachelor's in art history, uh, and she graduates summa cum laude. Congratulations. Han Yu Chen. John, Jonathan Kianese. Jonathan graduates with his art history bachelor's, and he graduates magna cum laude. Mm -mm. Congratulations, Jonathan. Han Yu, Han Yu Chen. Okay. No. okay, we have Alexa Jade Frankelis. Alexa graduates with her art history major and she graduates summa cum laude. Congratulations, Alexis. Yulong Hu. Yulong Hu graduates with her art history major, a studio art minor, and a digital art minor, and she graduates summa cum laude. Congratulations. Kechun Lung. Kechun Lung graduates with his art history major and he graduates summa cum laude. Isong Margaret Jung. <laughs> Isong graduates with an art history major and a studio art minor. Thank you. Hold on. To all my lovely. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Congratulations. Uh, Su Young Sung. Su Young graduates with a bachelor's in art history and she graduates magna cum laude. Okay, I'm, I just want to touch on Han Yu Chen. I don't know if we missed her. Han Yu graduates with her bachelor's in art history. Okay. So moving right along, congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, at this point, I am very proud to present the senior honors projects in art history and in studio art for spring 2020. Students who complete 
honors projects engage in research and artistic creation. The students who have undertaken the senior honors project are exemplary both artistically and academically. The honors program is open to seniors who have maintained a GPA of at least 3.5 in their major. In art history, the student undertakes a research project and prepares an extensive written thesis under the direction of a faculty mentor. In studio art, the student works independently under the direction of a faculty sponsor on a major project or body of work, culminating in a thesis statement and an exhibition of the work. These projects often reach across disciplines to expand the conversation on a wide range of themes and issues. Students use this opportunity to challenge themselves with ideas, techniques, and professionalism. This year, project media include photography, video, website design and coding, drawing, painting, printmaking, and sonic sculpture. Honors project themes include personal reflections on cultural traditions and familial relationships, environmental and social concerns, and reflections and responses to the current pandemic. The senior honors projects in art history are Alexa Jade Frankelis. Her project is Spirits and Suffrage, the use of photography to channel grief. She has a BA in art history and her advisor is Brooke Belisle. Congratulations, Alexa. The next project is by Yulong Hu. Her project is How Does a Fictional Documentary Film Disturb Audience? Ethics, Media, and Subjects in Dragonfly Eyes. 2017. Yulong has a bachelor's in art history, studio art minor, digital arts minor, and her advisor was Andrew Yurusky. Congratulations, Yulong. And finally, Kachun Lung, reading Ruth Asawa, Critical Reception, 1950s to the Present. Kachun has a BA in art history and a BA in psychology, and his advisor was David Mather. Congratulations, Ketchum. The Senior Honors Projects in Studio Art. Um, these projects are, actually, are visible on our website. If you go on the art department website, uh, Takafumi Ide did a wonderful job in posting them, so they are all available for your viewing. Um, our first project is by Rhys Aguilo Quadra. The title is I Was an Angel Once. She has a BA in studio art with an art history minor. The advisor is Maya Schindler. Congratulations, Reese. The second project is Lauren Camarato, The Art of Concealment. BA in studio art, art history minor, digital art minor. Her advisor is Isak Burbick. Our next project was Boris Kishinevsky, Sonic Spaces. BA in Studio Art, Math BA, Digital Arts Minor, Computer Science Minor, Music and Tech Minor, and Honors College Scholar. And his advisor was Professor Ian Allen Paul. The next project is Ciara by Ciara Miles Lampa. It is titled Left Behind. Ciara has a BA in studio art with an art history minor and her advisor is Howardina Pindell. The next project is by Nahi Lee, Digital Phobic Light in Analog. Nahi has a BA in studio art with a digital art minor and her advisor is Isak Burbick. The next project is Catherine Meyer 2020-001M, Together in Isolation. Catherine has a BA in Studio Art, and her advisor on the project was Jason Parody. Congratulations, Kat. Young Young No, her project is entitled Days. 
Young Young receives her Bachelor in Studio Art with a Digital Arts minor. Her advisor is Isak Burbick. The next project is by Isabel Grace Simon in The Waiting Hours. Isabel receives her BA in Multidisciplinary Studies and I was her advisor. The next project is Na Sit Se, oh, sorry, A Sit. Her project is In a Dream. BA in Studio Art, Digital Art Minor. Her advisor is Isak Burbick. The next project is by Joey Ventura, entitled Sky Series. Joey receives a BA in Studio Art an art history minor, and his advisor is Jason Parody. Congratulations, Joey. The next project is Matthew Walsh. <laughs> Matthew's project is named Divine Ascension. Matthew received this BA in studio art, digital art minor, and his advisor is Ian Allen Paul. Congratulations, Matthew. And our final project is by Samantha Westman, entitled Know Yourself. Samantha receives her BA in Studio Art and her Art History minor, and I was her advisor. That was great. So please go and view these projects um, online. Uh, they've been posted lovingly, and you get a view of everything. They would have ordinarily had their exhibition, so this is a wonderful platform for everybody to have a really slow and wonderful look at the work. Um, so um, before I leave off to our next speaker, I want to remind your students a few simple things before you go. This is when I cry. <laughs> um, please stay connected. Stay in touch with your colleagues and your mentors. Opportunities and new connections are everywhere. Send your wishes out to the universe. You will be heard. Life does not move in a linear manner. Everyone's journey is unique. Straying or pausing on your path is often just the right thing to do. New experiences and human connections enhance who we all are. Be good to yourself. Keep working, keep caring. Stay in touch with those who have made this part of your journey fun and fruitful. I hope you will go forth and continue to give as much as you receive. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Congratulations. I would like to now introduce um, our commencement speaker, um, our dear colleague, Howardina Pindell. Howardina is a distinguished professor in our art department. She received her MFA from Yale University and has since received two honorary doctorates, one from the Massachusetts College of Art and one from Parsons School of Design. She has received numerous grants and awards, including the Guggenheim Fellowship, two National Endowment for the Arts grants, and the Studio Museum in Harlem Artist Award. Her work is in many distinguished collections, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Yale Art Museum. She has taught at Stony Brook in the art department since 1979. We are very fortunate to have her as a beloved colleague and as a valued mentor to our undergraduate and graduate students. I welcome Howardina. So Howardina has pre-recorded her message to you all, but she is online. And if you want to talk to her afterwards, we can do that. But right now I'm going to share my screen for Howardina's pre-recorded message. Congratulations, graduates, welcome family, relatives, and friends. This is a very stressful time in Earth's history. Every part of the world has been affected. I encourage you do not give up. I was born during the polio epidemic. Polio was also a virus. There was no worldwide communication, 
no cell phones, at that point no TVs, personal computers, no social media, no web. Jet airplanes were beginning to move from solely military use to commercial use. As artists, you all have a special gift to reach out and share with others through your creativity. Quarantined at home gives you an opportunity to distract yourself with your work from your fears and worries. When I have spoken in the past uh, at graduation, I have suggested that you map out a little space where you can do your work, even if it is just in a sketchbook. Date the pages so that you can see your progress. In time, you may be able to expand your space. Try to keep in touch with one another. This is the era of social media. You need not feel alone. For some, the isolation is very difficult, and for all of us, the unknown is very terrifying. I am hoping we can vote by mail so that we can not expose ourselves to the virus in order to vote. Although you may have heard some of the following suggestions before, I want to repeat them. I have consulted in some cases with doctors and listened to advice relative to the virus on CNN, MSNBC, the radio, 1010 Winds. One, remember to stand six feet apart. Some suggest you should not be with another person standing six feet apart no more than 10 minutes. That's if you're outside. Be sure when you go out to use your face mask, wear gloves, glasses, or goggles as the virus can enter through your eyes. Wear a hat and hang it up after five days, uh, the virus will die. Wipe down your mail, packages, and money before entering your house or apartment. For me, these are the hardest ones to follow. I wish all of you safety and good health. Do not take risks. Your creativity is a gift. You will be grateful for it and others will appreciate it. I wish you well, stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Howardina. So that, uh, that concludes our ceremony. I can stay on longer and let you go into different breakout rooms if you'd like um, so that you can talk to your professors or your fellow students. So I'm happy to keep the Zoom meeting going for as long as you want to uh, have a party <laughs> virtually with everybody. So um, it, just put it in the um, chat and I will try to get those breakout rooms going as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for coming um, and thanks to those who helped to make this happen and thanks to everybody for teaching and thanks to everybody for learning and thank you everyone for art and for everything. So um, congratulations to our graduates, congratulations to our awardees and have a wonderful summer. Um, I hope that you can get outside at least a little bit and I look forward to seeing everyone next year. Um, whether it is in person or virtually, um, please keep in touch. We do, we do mean it when we say that. All right, congratulations. And I'm gonna keep the Zoom open for the people that are in the breakout rooms, but everyone else can, can go and thank you so much.